Hello, my name is Vaughn Pierce, and I'm here for the Smocking Arts Guild of America, or SAGA, which is our national organization for smocking. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do the cable stitch put together, which becomes picture smocking or the stacked cable. We're going to start out using four strands of stranded floss. Um, DMC or Anchor, Presentia are all different brands of stranded cotton floss and for stacked cables you want to use four strands to give you nice full coverage because you're going to be laying these stitches one upon the other and you don't want the fabric to be showing through. To start off with, and I would also use um, a little bit larger needle since you're using four strands, so I typically use a seven darner needle. It's a little bit longer and it has a larger eye so that all the threads will fit through the needle without any tension on them. So when you're starting out, you're going to come in the valley between the first two pleats that you're going to be smocking on. You're going to be coming from the wrong side to the right side and then you're going to take your needle back through the first pleat so that you come out the side of the pleat. And the reason you start your stitches like this is because all your consecutive stitches are coming out of a side pleat into a new pleat. And so if you start your stitches like this, that first stitch is actually starting just like all your other stitches are going. I also stitch holding my fabric sideways, stitching from the left side of the fabric to the right side of the fabric, but holding it over my index finger and then anchoring it in place with my second finger in the back, my third and fourth finger in the front. That way I can see exactly where my thread is coming out of the pleat and I can see exactly where my needle is going into the new pleat. This helps me get nice straight even stitches. So I'm going to go over my to the new pleat. I've come out of an old pleat and into a new pleat. You want to put your needle position about a thread width away from the pleating thread on your first row. And you're going to pull through. If you grab the thread over your thumb, you can take your needle and you can use it to straighten out your thread so that you can count every single strand of floss there. That'll keep your stitches nice and full. So I'm going to do um, a left cable, which if you're used to holding it this way is a up cable. And then I'm going to do the same thing, go to a new pleat. I'm going to put my needle in and out of that new pleat a thread width away from the pleating thread. And I'm going to make sure that all of my threads are laying next to each other side by side. And I'm going to do about four or five of these. And you can just inch your fabric along your finger. You don't have to take and reposition your hands every time. You can also use other threads for cable stitching. You can use Floche, you can use Cotton Broder size 25, you can use rayon ribbon floss, um, pretty much pearl cotton, any thread you can use to smock with, whether you're doing cable stitches or any other stitch. If you get to a point where your threads really start twisting, and it's hard to get them to lay straight. Before you take your next stitch, you want to take your needle and you want to bring it all the way down to the base of your fabric and straighten it out that way. And then you can start stitching again. So I'm going to take one last cable stitch. And then when you finish off your row, you're going to take your needle and just like you started, you came up between the first two pleats, you're going to take your needle and go down to the back through your last two pleats to make an invisible 
ending of your stitch. Um, on the back, I usually cable one or two stitches back into what you stitched on the front side, and then you don't want to catch your threads in there. Make a little loop and pull your needle through. And that's a quick, easy way to tie off. For your next row, um, and if you were making a shape, let's say this was a triangular shape, like a Santa Claus hat, you would start always at the widest row, and then you would either smock up or smock down. If you don't change colors, you keep going. But if you're changing colors, which I'm doing here to show you what this is going to look like, then you're going to get a new piece of thread. And I'm going to do a row right next to the pink row that I just did. I'm going to come up on the same valley between my first two pleats. I'm going to come back and this is where it really helps to be able to see where your needle is in position. You want to make sure that your starting stitch on your next row is coming out at the same depth as your first row because you may end up seeing the sides of these and you want the tension to be even all the way along the pleating row. So I'm going to bring my thread through and you are mirror imaging the first row. So in the first row I started with the left cable so on the next row I'm going to start with a right cable and I'm going to bring my needle through that first pleat and then I'm going to do a left cable. When you do the left cable it needs to be a thread width away again but when you pull this the cable stitch is going to butt right next to the right cable from the prior row. So as you stitch along this row and you alternate between a left cable and a right cable, every time your stitches meet from the prior row you want to make sure they're butted against them and that you have no thread showing through. You don't want to sew right on top of it but you want this to be a nice, clean, even join for those two stitches. And you're going to stitch this all the way across. So that you have a continuous row of cables that look like they are almost part of the prior row. Now in some plates, they'll show what's called a half stitch, so that when you are doing something that's square or rectangular, that you don't have this space hanging out here. And so what they do is they go, instead of going over a new pleat, they actually just go over the old pleat again to cover up that row. I didn't do it on the top row, but I'm going to do it on this bottom row right here, and I'm just going to go over in that same pleat and do a half stitch. And then I'm going to take the needle to the back between those two so that you have a fill in at the end. And you can see I've already done this one where I did two or three rows of pink cables, two rows of green cables, and then two more rows of pink cables so that you have a nice filled in object as you do your cable smocking. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, come back to the Smocking Arts Guild of America website. It's www.smocking.org for more information and links to other tutorials that we have up on our website.